All right, recording has started, and this is the May 30th, 2023 uh, Rook community meeting. Um, I think the last recording has still not been uploaded, uh, so I will follow up today to, to upload both this today's recording and last uh, last time's recording as well. Sorry for that delay. So let's uh, hop oh, on. It doesn't in. get up, uploaded automatically. Just nope, it, it, nope. It may look like that because of the rigorous consistency in which it gets done in the past, but uh, it is not automatic. It is it is a manual, Jared. Oh, good. Thank you for always doing that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, been, it's been a behind the scenes habit. work. Yeah, exactly. Um, all right, so we don't have anything planned for one point ten, so I will go ahead and skip on past that. And let's just review real quick uh, the the uh, last 1.11 patch release, which was the dot six release. Uh, if memory serves me correctly, this was this release was going to be done right after the community meeting a lot from two weeks ago. So I don't think we talked about uh, this in the last community meeting. So let's just look at the mm -hmm. uh, any highlights here that you want to call out real quick uh, from this last release. Uh, let's see the monitoring. It's interesting skipping the service monitor if we're not enabled. That's kind of and there's there's been a follow up fix there related to monitoring, which yeah, because of how some things worked where we changed the version supported for this FX porter, and now it's effectively disabled for the latest set versions. There's well, I guess it's not related to this release, but a follow up release for the next. Um, the next one we have we have an issue related to monitoring and exporter that, that we'll get to but um it was oh, about halfway down what kind of caused this regression is the default active manager label if only one manager is running so related to that one and also the exporter version change uh, i'm trying to remember now from the long weekend what it was but basically it um a couple of issues we've we've had some fixes for, and we'll get into the release today or tomorrow. Anyway, all righty then. So we want to. So yeah, that's going to yeah. essentially follow the same pattern, right? Of a the next release, the dot seven patch release for one eleven, being done not too long after today's community meeting as well. Then, so let's look at the board and see if we can get the context then on uh, on those particular fixes that we expect. Yeah, so the Avon has a PR in progress, which I need to put to the blocking release column. I haven't had a chance to look at the board yet today. Um, but yeah, we need his fix in so we can get the exporter cleaned up. If the Which number is that, Travis? Version. I'm looking for it right now. It's, let's see. Twelve two seventy one. I'm adding it to the board now. Okay, that's twelve two seventy one here. Yep, I just updated the projects, and did not refreshing. There it is. Okay, it's in the blocking release column now. If you refresh. Is it takes a minute? Apparently, I moved it. There it is. All right, oh, there we go. go. Okay, okay. I believe you. I believe you. All right. So yeah, what it catches up on on uh, on this PR and is blocking release. So we're saying that um, that until this is re reviewed and merged, approved, etc., that will the release uh, one point eleven point seven will not will not be completed. Yes. So Ivan is still looking at some feedback on the PR, which I just made after the long weekend. So it may be fixed today, and if not tomorrow, uh, we'll get it get it done. It's it's close. It's just uh, still in progress. So we'll, and this is basically if so we, a couple releases ago we enabled the exporter daemon for the latest Ceph version seventeen two six, but then the next release we disabled it because there were a couple issues that wasn't quite ready, and then. Now the exporter stays behind, and we need to clean up some of it for the since the set version doesn't support it. Anyway, so it's a cleanup PR for that situation. 
There we go. Got it. Okay. So uh, then we expect the your um, feedback here to be incorporated in hopefully sometime today, and maybe we can get that get that all wrapped up. Is there a desire then to also get um, this PR in as well? It's it's currently in in progress for review, but it's not blocking the release. Uh, we won't consider it that way, right? Right. I think that's my list of to do to review today. Um, I don't think they would block through the release, but certainly if it's in, then we'll include it. Cool. Sounds good to me. That's been in review for over a month now, I think. Uh, okay. So today isn't necessarily going to be the magic day for that one. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. Uh, anything else that we want to call out that's already done uh, that will be included in the release as well? Yeah, not so much. Just you know, there are definitely got a few fixes, um, but I can't think of any to call out. All right, sounds good. All right, so that is so the plan then is to hopefully get out 1.11.7 today. We took a look at the board there. Um, anybody else wants to raise anything important for uh, 1.11 in the upcoming patch release that we expect to go out today? Okay. All right, so then we can go ahead and take a look at the upcoming uh, 1.12 board. Uh, I think last time we talked about, maybe it was, yeah, I think it was last time, about the, um, you know, the themes for 1.12 and, uh, you know, the roadmap is up to date, etc. Um, but then I don't know if we've taken the follow up to get the board completely up to date and scrubbed. Um, so if this is the 1.12 board here, uh, and the release is uh, about, I don't know, six weeks away, I suppose, um, month and a half away. So, Still plenty of time left in, in 1.12 uh, life cycle here. And uh, let's see what is important on this one. Um, I know uh, there's been some progress around 1507 that would be highly impactful uh, for you know, a long, long time of investment in that one. Um, is that looking like it's going to you know, be included in, in 1.12 timeframe too, Travis? Yes, I'd expect that one in the nice. next week. I don't know if it'll be merged in the next couple of weeks, but it's more, large, more of a design exercise than an implementation exercise, just because trying to make sure we get cover all the corner cases. And, but at the end of the day, I don't think there will be a lot of code. So uh, it's more relying on what happens with um, the new out of service, node out of service label that Kubernetes has or the taint um, and then how we react to that we need to yeah fence the node which i don't believe is a, is a huge change but i think shabam's getting ready to open a pr soon though for that beyond the design pr other than that the kazi driver is yeah the, the biggest feature probably that we'd really love to see and jiffin is actively working on getting that so I'd say that's, yeah, there's still a lot to do with the Kazi driver as, um, yeah, so I don't know what else there might be too, but those are the main ones on my mind. Got it. And how about Blaine, Alexander, other folks uh, for things that are important for you in, in 1.12 that are still, uh, you know, either on the board already and, you know, we're going to get an investment in or things that uh, maybe need, still need to be added to the board uh, that we expect or hope to have in 1.12. Um, yeah, well, I don't have anything to add um, directly to work right now for the 1.12 release. Blaine, anything, anything on your mind that you want to include in 1.12 discussion? Nothing, nothing specifically. Um, one of the things that I'm constantly kind of like looking at is uh, generally getting NFS into like enterprise shape. Um, I 
think for the 4.12, like, or 4.12, so 1.12 timeline, um, I think we're still just going to be seeing some CSI improvements for NFS uh, rather than Rook specifically, but there, yeah, looking looking forward, there are several of us in the like SEP and uh, like uh, Rook community looking into like high availability, like actually multiple active uh, servers. And I think that is captured somewhere, but it's not like specifically on a release. Like we're still doing a lot of like investigation and like just not even really prototyping as much as just like poking around the edges of things to see, uh, you know, what we need. Well, cool. that's definitely a good theme to be investing in. Uh, so I know that'll be useful for sure. Yeah, let us know if you have any, uh, like if any tangible, uh, you know, concrete like findings or or uh, plans to address certain like particular issues come up. We can, you know, make sure that they're added onto the board and tracked here too. Yeah, at yeah, at some point, there uh, an HA design will probably show up, or it will definitely show up. And at that point, then I think we can put it on a like a, a project board. Cool. Sounds good. How about other folks for 1.12? Anything else that folks want to bring up here uh, while we're still kind of yeah, halfway through the milestone or so? I just wanted to respond to what Blaine said. I'm actually interested in that Blaine HA for NFS exports. So if you need a guinea pig, I completely volunteer. Happy to volunteer. Uh, well, that's a dangerous statement. <laughs> <laughs> Down this road before. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I have. I welcome your experience and and guinea pigness. Yeah, I just need to get care bros rolled out first, and then we'll be be willing to guinea pig something else. Uh, <laughs> I, it, it's in here in the card is the LDAP integration. So I haven't done anything in the last month. Uh, after two meetings ago, I said I was going to look at it. I rebased it on master just to see if CI would pass, and I did not understand what had bit rotted in the, the testing. Uh, and so I need to figure that out before I start working on Blaine. Thank you so much for all the comments. I, I knew that it wasn't updated on the doc. I wasn't uh, thinking that it was ready. I was just trying to get CI to go and I don't know why it's broken and uh, oh. I've been stuck on other issues, but I'm hoping to get back to it this week or next. Well, no, no rush. I've certainly got enough stuff to keep me busy. Uh, well, if you can <laughs> help me figure out why the CI is not working, that would be great. But uh, I guess I'm hoping to get to it this yeah. week. Let me let me open that up, and I can take a take a little look. Maybe later. It's eleven oh ninety one. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Just glancing at the CI. Our CI, I think, is a little less reliable than last fall. So it might. I think it's just no. I think I retriggered it two or three times. I, I mean, there are certain there are yeah. certain canaries that randomly fail with no reason and i re-triggered it two or three times and, and it failed in the same way i think there may be some timeout changes like we need to wait longer for resources to settle on on the uh the mini queue uh but it, i don't know why it, it used to work reasonably reliably on that branch and now it just it totally failed yeah i see the rgw ldap testing the canary test is failing that might be the one to mainly focus on if that's the new code. Yeah. yeah. This might be a good uh, good place to um, pull in the, the teammate uh, uh, parallel testing thingy. Sorry, my coffee is not working. Merged. Yeah. <laughs> What was the the teammate testing thingy? Um, I uh, I don't know what the the PR number is. Uh, it's effectively just uh, I, I was doing some work related to uh, stuff related to Multis, and 
uh, was having to debug their tests that don't have any log collection. And I was like, maybe I can just like put teammate in a like a little Fedora container and just like run it and then have teammate run in the Kubernetes cluster with like permissions to like edit anything it wants to. And it worked. So that's a, a really great and easy way to run a like teammate interactive shell that has Kubernetes access so that we can debug tests while they're actually happening instead of waiting until they've like failed and a lot of times like it, especially if it's a timeout issue like once it has failed stuff has like cleared up and is now yeah. fine and so it's um, doing doing things uh, during uh, during test execution is really helpful and nice I did I did actually, I, I've been trying to set up a, an integration test for the multi-validation tool that I wrote. And I did notice there, there were a couple like minor script issues. So I can, I can comment Josh on what, uh, what we can add to that PR to like debug during execution. Yeah, the, the teammate thing is great. I, I I've used it. I, I appreciate it. The only the only negative to it is is that it makes all the tests take longer to fail. So if you're doing the push and forget and then come back later, ah. it takes a while before you get the status that yes. everything is, is is failed. So that's that's the one yeah. downside. But yeah, it's great. And and uh, this is oh this is this is a different a different way of using teammate than that. Oh, because okay. that that also has been like frustrating to me that that only shows up after the test fails. Um, this just runs, this just starts teammate running in the Kubernetes cluster. Oh, uh, oh in an oh, environment. I understood. Yeah. Yeah, I, so, I'm following now. Okay. Uh, yeah, can confirm is pretty great at helping debug stuff. Oh, yeah. There. After we get a little more familiarity with this new approach, I think we'd even want to disable the test running at the end of the teammate running at the end because like you said josh it does slow it down you don't know it you don't even realize it's failing and so let's just fail immediately and if you need to, need to debug it let's enable this and just rerun the test yeah no yeah. it sounds like a huge improvement also um, the i mean one of the big things that i did last week was that multis uh, uh the multis e2e test that i was talking about so in the files there, there's like a, uh, in the uh, GitHub action, there's a start teammate action. And it is on the conditional if runner.debug, which if, I mean, most people, I guess like, I, I don't think Josh would, but uh, like Travis and I have, and Alexander and a few others of us have abilities to like restart tests with uh, like, like a debug checkbox. And that would automatically start that like during runtime teammate parallel session. And then I also made it accept a like debug CI label, which is also something that like we could add on to PR to get that extra debug info. I think it's probably good that only, I mean, like only, you know, maintainers and reviewers can can actually allow that so that we don't have people abusing teammates for, you know, crypto mining or whatever. But that has that that is something I experimented with a little bit, and is that like current, you know, however like eight line version of it's working well so far. Yeah, this this is really cool, Blaine. Um, I think this is yeah, this is <clears throat> nice to. You know, have as a, a more rigorous, the thorough option to be able to, you know, explore failures in CI exam environments, especially when they're tricky and intermittent and all that jazz. So this is this seems really cool. Um, I hadn't seen that until just now. This is really neat. Yeah, it it seems so obvious now, having like been like, oh, we'll just run it in Kubernetes. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm very excited about it. Cool. All right, so then we kind of 
popped for 1.12 and then started the community topics session there. So I think <laughs> we covered everything we wanted to around 1.12 and, and next steps for that. Uh, and then we've now covered uh, you know, using teammate as a debugging aid for, for CI failures. Uh, so I guess they can move on down then to the next um, agenda item as well then, Travis. Um, I guess back on the one on that 12, just thinking about tentative dates uh, for the release around July, July 18th, I think is the timeline I'm thinking for, for that. So I guess I should update that in the agenda, but um, possible you want to do it earlier, even like July 5th, depends. I've got some vacation planned in July, so I just want to plan around that, but I'll get back on, but we could say July 18th for now, and potentially, um, yeah, adjust that if needed. That sounds good, Travis. Thanks for that update. And that, uh, that's after the Ceph brief release, or is that before? That's true. actually that's right. So the but uh, yeah, earlier July maybe actually is what I was thinking more because of the staff reef release. The reef is being released in June. That's all the latest I've heard, just June. Mm -hmm. And so maybe we should target more like July fifth so that that's closer to when reef would be. Um yeah. So yeah, actually Jerry, can you change that to July fifth? Because that That'd be more in line with this here with reef. Yeah. Yep. That, that's right. So, so let's target July 5th because of reef. And then yeah, I think that'll be better. Yeah. I think even even if re if release, even if reef's release slips a little bit, um we can at least say that we have uh like we should support uh release versions of reef when they are released. Well. Cool. All right, sounds good. Good update there. All right, Travis, you ready for the crew plugin and talk now? All right, yep, yeah. let's go down there now. So the we have had a, a little bug bashing in the last couple of weeks on the crew plugin, the Golang implementation. Uh, Instead of using a label on the blocking issues, I guess we should put together a board and follow the same pattern we do for, for the work project. But yeah, basically we've got two these two tags marked as blockers. So we need to figure out why the OSD purge is hanging. And I think um, Shabam has a PR on the namespace logs or no, Blaine, that was your PR, I think. But yep, we'll get that going. Then we'll be nice to have a release soon with the plugin. And then I feel like we'll be able to accelerate on new features getting added to that instead of just trying to get parity with the, the old one. Is there I, I, I is there any expectation of like a migration or user experience change or that's you know the same commands, same behavior, all that's still supported, but now instead of like you know shell scripts, it's it's uh, has a GoLang code implementation instead. Yeah, the goal of this change has been to try and get backward compatibility, you know, same functionality basically for the command line options. Uh, I think I'd say backward compatibility isn't strictly um, necessary or exactly the goal, but it's still I mean, expected that's, though. That's what we are expecting. Uh, okay. And if there's a regression or maybe not exact backward compatibility, I, I don't think it's really a concern, honestly, because these are more of manual commands, not something people are probably scripting. Well, maybe they are, I don't know, but I think we'll have largely backward compatible commands. And then, yeah, people, users won't even notice that it's a going yep. instead of- That would be ideal for sure, <laughs> with no experience change. And then we can iterate uh, over time as, as needed with new features, functionality and, you know, changes as as appropriate yeah sweet that's amazing okay uh anything else on that travis that's all i got for that topic all right alex uh update us with uh, the newest from last week with uh getting the orbit tool uh up and running yep 
yeah, so I had the call with them and uh, they're going to get back to me in uh, hopefully a few days um, now. Um, yeah. But that's basically like they are, I've explained what work is to them and they were like, um, yeah, they're going to uh, uh, like go through their open source project thing, tiering, and uh, we should hopefully soon get here back from there. Um, yeah. And then uh, Alex, I saw an email that the trial is about to expire now. Is that is that a concern while you know you're kind of wait still waiting for them to get back to us, or that just kind of drop us down to the standard you know free because they have like a starter tier that you know you you don't have additional functionality in. We are already now on the your team is on a non a premium non profit plan. So oh, we do. I didn't get an email so. Oh, so we think that this went through then? Yeah, seems like it. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, done. And I guess as like uh, for uh, the maintainers, uh, especially here, um, I kind of went, like I kind of just talked about like where sometimes people ask questions and um, I was able to integrate Stack Overflow, for example, as well um, into Orbit now. So we basically get data from GitHub Slack and Stack Overflow into it to see uh, what's going on and who's using it and uh, yeah we can't plug in twitter anymore but well i'm i don't want to go into the accessing an api anymore but, yeah well sweet that's definitely good news and like the, yeah, jared when did you get that email about the trial i feel yeah. like it was like yesterday uh -huh. uh like within the last 40 at least within the last 48 hours i thought i, saw I don't it remember too. seeing it either Okay. Uh, yeah, your tri orbit trial ends tomorrow, uh, and that was today at three p.m. Um, at European time, so like six a.m. Pacific time this morning. I thought like hmm. it's saying that we're on a non-profit plan now, a premium non-profit plan, so I would not worry about it. Cool. Yeah, yeah, it's, it sounds like it, that's that's a new update since that email was sent out automatically earlier. So yeah, that's that sounds yeah, good. The UI says that. To you and then the system was like, oh wait a second, now it's a nonprofit or like you know, front. Yeah, they can't recall the email. <laughs> okay, well that's great. Uh, great progress with that, uh, Alex. That, that sounds really cool. And I get it's really quick just to reiterate one point, for example, right now, that it would, for example, show us um, what I'm seeing right now here, for example, is. Um, that uh, Praveen merged the first PR on Rook, for example. Like that's what Orbit to some degree is also about, like that we gain some more insights there. So, yeah. I mean, anyone from the maintainers who isn't added to it yet, please reach out to me. Um, yeah. I think currently, oh, wait, let me check the collaborator, collaborators page. Currently, it's only Jared, Travis, and me. Um, Blaine, if you send me your email via Slack, I can look into adding you to it as well. Can do. Um, yeah. Okay. And then Alex, uh, new architecture diagram is in progress as well. It's already have a PR open for it. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, Where should I start with this? This is the typical, I guess, example of the, yeah, we have a we have a diagram, but we can't edit it. But now we can edit it because the source code for the diagram is checked into the repository. You might not necessarily want to click on the uh, draw IO file. It's XML magic. Let's just keep it at that. <laughs> okay, fair enough. But um, the, the rendered version is this .png? Yeah, this is a PNG, yeah. Cool. So I guess the main point here is really just if you could, uh, if you go back to the actual PR, not to that one that's outdated at the moment. There has been quite- At the bottom of the comments. Service, if you scroll to the bottom. Oh, ah, uh, here, okay. this guy? No, no, a little, no, no, little further. That's old one. That's two oh, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> so, sorry. This is kind of like the high level architecture that I would currently propose here. That we, you see that you have read, read, you have read, read many, you have, you have S3, 
that you have the operator, you have the CSI driver and provisioners, and that you have, in this case, three nodes as an example with some components. It's a bit detailed on that side, um, but I think it's, you know, like it gives people deep enough insight that there's at least one pod running in the end for you to be able to consume your storage, I guess, if that makes any sense. Um, and for the other diagrams that I'm currently working on there, um, it's going to be a more detailed kind of like per the storage, what components are in play to for you to create a PVC and get your storage mounted to your pod. But this is currently, this would be like the new high level architecture diagram. And I, I assume that, you know, the one that gets uh, committed to the, you know, the Rook docs and, and code base, whatever, um, would it be called Rook architecture? Uh, yes, yeah. I... A typo, you just spelled it backwards. I'm juggling sorry. with like 10 files right now of diagrams, so I... Uh... <laughs> yeah, a lot uh, going on uh, over there, huh? Updated on the next one. Uh, wrong one. Yep, sounds good. Uh, this is, yeah, this this looks... Uh, yeah, I, I guess, yeah, we can maybe talk more about it on the on the PR. Yeah, it looks like we're trying to balance like a you know component interaction, you know, boundary type of thing, and then also like a more simplified architecture and stack uh, as well. So maybe this this finds a good balance between that. Um, but yeah, I want to think about that more. That that's that's currently the idea. Yeah, basically yeah. to um, kind of like the reason also why it's such so layer um, is that it's. I guess giving the, like, I, I'm still fighting with myself a bit there, um, or I think even a little bit of Travis and Blaine there, if it might make sense, for example, to even add like a small Kubernetes or like a box around everything, I guess, you know, for like, you need Kubernetes for this, so to say, or like everything is in Kubernetes. Like it, it well, so I think maybe just bringing that up as an idea, should we add? like a frame around at least the lower part of the high level chart of like, this is what will be in Kubernetes. Um, or is that too far yeah. then I guess for that? Well, every, everything would be in one single Kubernetes frame, right? The apps and Rook, it's all in the same Kubernetes. But yeah, yep. I mean, we can follow up on the PR and like the so. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so real the uh, main point is really just that we have the source code of the diagrams and can then easily upgrade uh, update them. Um, as for example, in one of the earlier ones already as well, I think I already started mentioning Cozy, which isn't quite there yet. So that's why it's currently just S3 API. Um, um, but when Cozy is there, it'd be really just someone needs to plop it into Dryo and edit it committed and we're done again so yeah even with that one though i feel like cozy is more of a detail so if we could keep that in a se just separate because we talked about having that high level one and then three lower level ones so cozy could be in the lower level one maybe okay. but we can see oh, well but csi is also quite low level but it's like it, it the, the reason why i would like to include maybe even cozy there at least as like a mention in at least one box is that um, these are all things that like, um, you know, like if we stack everything on top, we're basically having Kubernetes, we have the Rook operator, then we have technically Ceph that is running, then we have CSI, technically Cozy in the operator or somewhere else. And like it kind of all, you know, stacks together. So mm -hmm. I don't know, we kind of see Cozy as either part of the operator, depending on how it's going to be run, or as like a second, or like an addition to the operator level or on the CSI yeah. layer, maybe. Yeah, I would I would consider probably putting Cozy in the same like layer as CSI. It's like a um mm -hmm. yeah, it's a uh, I, I don't know how to like phrase it, but they're they're so similar. I mean, it, it's. Even cozy is the same acronym. You just throw object in between the C and the S. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I agree. I, I, mm -hmm. I get to, that it might be too much. I get that it might be too much throws, even for this high level view. It's just that um, I feel that we should mention it at least as then as one part because in the end it's one 
primary component you're probably going to use if you use Rook with, well, at least one of the storages. Well, well, if you don't use RGW, okay, we can argue about that, but like it's. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah, I, I do think I could see it now as part of the orange layer with CSI, but I think that that makes sense too. Yeah, I, yeah, and I think calling out CSI and like especially, um, I think also Cozy will will probably drive like people to check it out if we have it in that diagram, and that is ultimately like what we want and what we need. Um, and I I was finally able to to sync up with the cozy folks on the uh, standups that are now bi-weekly um, and uh, yeah they're they're kind of just in an information gathering phase that now they're wanting users they're wanting user feedback uh, and yeah i think we're in a good position to like be able to help provide a lot of that and i mean we we already have have been by nature of having experience with the proto cozy lib bucket provisioner stuff. Yep. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, yep, that makes sense to me as well. Uh, all right. So then yeah, it sounds like maybe a couple more comments to drop in on that PR now that Alex just yesterday uh, provided that updated diagram. They're the most recent version we were just looking at. So thanks for that effort, Alex, appreciate that. Um, that was everything that was in the agenda document for today. Anything else that folks wanted to bring up before, before we adjourn for the week? Um, the, there's an action item still, I guess, set up Slack and extended. Any Word on that, Jared? It's no, no, it, it was not something that I prioritized uh, in the last two weeks while I was catching up uh, from my from my multi week off uh, time. Um, since you know we the it, I think this is something that should be done before the next community meeting, uh, but was not done since last time since we you know kind of uh, understood that it's not super super pressing because we have some breathing room with the current invite system. No worries. But yeah, no no update yet, buddy. Thanks. Yep. Yeah. And I was entered in the huddle. There was a an item I said we were going to add to the agenda today. I can't remember what it was now, though. Do you? <laughs> uh, oh, yes. I opened the document, and I think I even clicked on uh, at the right point, but I didn't write anything. Um, <laughs> yeah, sorry, good point. Um, <laughs> it was about the uh, adopt us MD file. Um, I guess I would oh, right. let's currently just voice it as like a concern or just as like a what can we do about it is um so the adopt us md file well it contains company names and also uh, links um to company websites um the problem is there's i guess for like that there's quite some more and more which are not working or at least a few are not working uh last time i went through quite like i we clicked through them um so I guess the question yeah. is like, how should we handle this? Should we reach out or try to reach out to them? Should we just remove it's, them? Yeah, go. So, the, yeah, the model, I was just going to say we... Oh, go ahead, Travis. Go ahead, Jared. No, Travis, go, you go ahead, sir. <laughs> I was going to say, we haven't updated this at all since we graduated, like, what, two or three exactly. years ago? Yeah, exactly. So I think if links are broken, we could just remove the link and if if people want to add themselves like we had a pr just opened a few days ago where somebody wanted to add themselves to list great um that's fine um it'd be nice to do a survey again sometime soon to say hey let's update this who wants to be on it and just see what response we get i think that would be nice too um but to fix links in the short term i think if we just remove the link that that would be fine too yeah, I that that, that sounds fine with me, Travis. Uh, similar sentiments here is that you know broken links we can yeah just turn them not not into links or if you know if they're like do a little research to see how okay did they change websites or domains or something like that and try to update it appropriately that's that's totally reasonable I think. 
um, a model that I've seen work pretty well for adopters files, um, you know, which we didn't really need to do because we did this for graduation and, and essentially never touched it again. Uh, but a model I've seen work really well. And I, I think the first place I saw it was in the backstage project. Um, but basically you turn this into a self-service uh, effort where you know you you have explicit language and wording around encouraging people to open PRs and add themselves and you know talk about the benefits to the project that that provides, et cetera. So um, that's probably a good idea as well too to to go ahead and turn this into a self service uh, type of experience. Um, there's a mm -hmm. we did we I, I talked to the backstage folks and then you know took that idea from them uh, when they told me about it. So that that's where the credit goes to is at least in, as far as I know is the backstage folks. Um, and then we did that in the crossplane project as well where we give three options where you you know you could say hey you can open up a PR here. Then we also like created a you know, Google form survey sort of thing of like, if you're not comfortable using Git or opening a PR or whatever, you can just, you know, go to the form and fill it in. And then, you know, we get that data on the back end uh, from the Google forms result. And then we'll just do a PR ourselves. Maintainers can do that. And then also you can like reach out to the steering committee if you want to, you know, send an email to us and, and share your story there. And then we'll, we'll do it that way. So there's kind of three different options you have for, for joining in. So that's a nice way to try to make it more like encourage people to participate themselves uh, as opposed to, you know, just the project maintaining it. Cool. I like that. Yeah, let's do it. Let me uh, just drop a link to it because I, I took what Backstage did and then I um, kind of took it a little bit further. So you see here, you're like, there's three different options um, there. So I'll just drop this into the agenda doc too. Mm -hmm. Nice. Cool. Let's do it. And was that the that was the the item that you all were trying to remember from earlier today? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh, yay. All right. Exactly. Nice. Excellent work, folks. Okay. Then anything else in the agenda now? Any other long forgotten items to discuss? All right, then we can go ahead and adjourn and good to see everybody today. Sounds good. Thanks, everyone. All right, take yeah, care, folks. Thanks.